So we need to do a review of electronic configurations before we go any, any further. Uh, the number of D electrons is going to be really important for the succeeding discussion here. So with the transition metals, that's usually what we're talking about in this chapter. Uh, if we look at, say, scandium right here, if we did the noble gas configuration, so the last noble gas we'd cross for scandium would be argon. So, and then potassium and calcium here represent the 4s electrons, and so it'd be 4s2. So, and then scandium's the 3ds, they're one behind, and we get 3d1. If you need more review on this stuff, there's definitely a whole, whole video on this back in chapter 6. Uh, so in this case, you should remember that for chromium and molybdenum, instead of being 4s2, 3d4, they're 4s1, 3d5. So, and then for copper, silver, and gold, instead of being, uh, you know, S2, D9, they're S1, D10. So again, all these steal in from the S and put in the D, and that could potentially be important uh, for some of the configurations you'll see. Uh, so we want to get electronic configurations for the following here. So chromium 3 plus, what you want to do in getting a, a transition metal cation is start just with the transition metal itself. And again, chromium is one of those exceptions, so it's 4S1, 3D, Five. This is just plain old chromium, and so chromium three plus. We got to remove three electrons. So, and you also have to remember that we remove the four S's before the three D's. You remove the highest shell number first. So we'll take out that four S electron, and then we'll take a couple three D's as well, and we'll be left with three D three. So, and knowing that chromium three plus has three D electrons uh, is important again for the succeeding discussion. So scandium three plus. So in this case, we already dealt with scandium over here, and this is plain old scandium right here, if we take away three electrons, we'd essentially just be isoelectronic with argon. So Fe3 plus on the other hand, so here's iron. So plain old iron, argon's the last noble gas we cross before we get to iron, and then 4s2 and 3d, and if you count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so 3d6. Now that's iron, so then Fe3 plus, Take away three electrons, take away the two 4s's first, and then a 3d, and you'll be left with argon 3d5. So if we start off with copper, just plain old copper, we have argon, and again copper's an exception, so instead of being 4s2, 3d9, he's 4s1, 3d10. So copper plus one then, Take away the one 4s electron and you're just left with argon 3d10. If you'd forgotten copper was an exception here, this is one you'd definitely get wrong. So finally, manganese 2 plus. If we start with just plain old manganese, manganese would be argon, again, 4s2. Here's manganese right here, and so 3d1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so if we've got manganese 2 plus now, we've got to remove two electrons, we'll take away those two 4s's, and we'll be left with argon. 3d5. Cool, like I said, knowing how many d-electrons uh, these transition metals have will be really crucial for the succeeding discussion.